Welcome, welcome my friends to your first video bonus exclusive. So to begin us off, in this video exclusive, I really wanted to hit on some very important things. So just to review horizontal asymptotes to limit as X approaches infinity, if we look over to the graph here, um, when we ever we want to find horizontal asymptotes, we want to do the limit, right, as X approaches infinity. And ideally, we need to do the limit as X approaches infinity, but we really don't have to do this with power functions. And I'll explain why. Really, if you have a horizontal to the right, you're going to have it the same thing to the left under a special condition and we're going to hit on that so just you can see here as we approach infinity to the right as our x values get really large what happens to our y values well what's happening to our wavelengths well they're getting smaller and smaller and approaching a wavelength of zero same thing is going to apply to the left right doesn't matter from the left we're going to approach zero all right so boom let's take a look at this one here right we've done this problem before find the horizontal asymptotes of this function right here and and we'll do that by starting off by doing well the limit as x approaches infinity and again i don't need to do the limit as x approaches negative infinity right because if the right has a horizontal asymptote well the left will and we ignore the bottom so we're going to get we're going to get one over x and then if we plug in infinity, we're going to get 1 over infinity, which approaches 0. Okay, so we know this is going to approach 0. What you can see here, it's going to approach 0 from the right as we approach infinity. And really, if we approach it from the left, it won't matter, right? Because we'll get negative infinity. But the problem is, is this is still divide. The bottom still getting bigger than the top. It's going to approach 0 just from this negative section. So we're golden. So we have a, a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. Okay? And this is always true. Whenever we're dealing with uh, power functions like find the limit as x approaches infinity of uh, x squared to the x to the third, right? If I asked you this, well, we're just going to get 1 over x, which is 1 over infinity, which is 0. So the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared over x to the third would be 0. Bottom grows bigger than top, we get 0. And again, it doesn't matter if it's negative infinity, it's still going to be 0. Okay. Now, uh, but there is a little slight difference when we're dealing with exponential functions. And to make sense of that, we're going to do this quick review of negative exponents. So um, if we look here, 3 times 2 squared is 3 times 2 times 2, right? The 2 squared means we're going to multiply 2 twice. We get 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, or 2 squared is 4, 3 times 4 is 12. And we'll do 3 times 2 to the 1 power, well, we just get 3 times 2. Notice that there's only one copy of 1, so we just get 6. Okay, if we do 3 times 2 to the 0, well, remember, anything to the 0 power is 1, so we get 3 times 1, which is 3, okay? And if you wanted to know why anything raised to the zero is one, well, think about up here. What's happening as we're going down this row here? Well, you'll notice, uh, ignore the three for a moment, right? Two squared means we have two copies. If I go to two to the one, essentially, I'm going to divide a two away. Boom. And I just get left with one of the twos, right? And then we get uh, two to the one is three times two, which is six. If I want to go down to the next row, well, I divide out a two. And that's why it becomes one. Okay, so what does, oops, what does a uh, negative exponent mean? Well, a negative exponent means the opposite. If a positive means we're going to multiply and zero means it's just one, then a negative exponent means we are going to do what? Well, we're going to divide two raised to this exponent one. So the negative just means that we're going to divide the three. So three divided by two to the one. Okay. Again, if you follow this logic to this table over here, all right, what do you want to do to get from here down to there? Well, what you're going to notice how we just kept dividing by 2 going the opposite direction. So we divide by 2 here, and that's the same thing. 3 times 1 is 3 divided by 2. So if you look down over here, we get 3 times 2 to the negative 3, which is 3 divided by the negative exponent means divide 2 to the third, which is 3 over 8, okay? 
um, and I skipped the negative two, but just to show you how you would work with that. So anytime you get something like this, two to the negative 10, you can just rewrite that as well. Over here, we had a three, which is on top. Notice there's nothing in front of the two, so we have to put a placeholder of one, and then this means divide the two raised to the 10th power, and that's it, okay? And this is gonna be really important when we go to do horizontal asymptotes with exponential functions. So for example, over here, all right, let's just ignore this and let's just go straight down to this one here, okay? Determine the horizontal asymptotes of f of x is equal to this. Well, naturally, we would do the limit as x approaches infinity and we ignore whatever is insignificant. Well, the one, so we're going to get 2 to the x divided by and then the bottom that we ignore is the one. We're left with is negative 2 to the x. Notice these are the same right and so we're going to get negative one so we know the limit as x approaches infinity is going to, of your function f of x is going to be negative one which you can see to the graph over here as i approach infinity to the right all my values are getting closer and closer to negative one well, believe it or not, look at this graph here. It has one horizontal asymptote, which is why you see go to negative one from the right. But what happens as you approach x and negative as x approaches negative infinity? Well, we're going to approach positive one. So this is actually gonna have strange enough. This is going to be a horizontal asymptote of 1 that's going to occur to the left. To the left, it's 1 because it's going to approach that. To the right, it's negative 1. Well, how do we make sense of that? Well, if we do the limit as we approach negative infinity, okay? Here's the thing. Uh, neg and when we approach positive infinity with exponential functions, right? They're just going to keep getting bigger, so we ignore. But whenever we approach negative infinity with exponential functions, we do not ignore the 1. And let me show you what's going to happen. We're going to get 1 plus 2 to the, just plug it in, negative infinity, 1 minus 2 to the, well, negative infinity. Okay? And I want us to just focus on the numerator for a minute. We have 1 plus 2 to the negative infinity. Well, how can we rewrite this? Well, this is going to be 1 plus plus well negative means divide and there's nothing in front of the two so one over two to the infinity okay well what's going to happen here well notice how the bottom gets bigger than the top so this whole thing is going to become zero and we get zero plus one plus zero so on the top we're going to get one plus zero and if we do the same thing on the bottom we have one minus two to the negative infinity notice this is going to become one minus the negative infinity up here means divide. So one over two to the infinity, this whole thing approaches zero because the bottom gets bigger than the top. So we get one minus zero. So this whole thing is one over one, which is positive one. So we get another horizontal asymptote of one. All right, really tricky stuff. Now, because they're exponential functions and we plug in negative infinity here, this is why we have to, we're going to keep everything the same and we're just going to plug it in because we know when we plug in a negative exponent, it's going to flip it, right? Two to the negative three is one over two to the third. And since it's going to continue to get, this negatives get bigger and bigger and bigger, essentially, we're going to keep getting bigger exponents on the bottom since we have to flip it. And this is only true only with exponential functions because when you have power functions okay they're they're your exponents not going to change right x squared doesn't change if you have this it doesn't if you plug in infinity you get one over infinity squared if you plug in negative infinity you get negative infinity you're still going to get it does not matter with power functions it's only exponential because the exponents on the top okay so let's take a look at over here and you'll notice this graph over here has two horizontal asymptotes and the equations right here and you can see it because it's exponential okay well as i approach infinity to the right well what happens well we're approaching zero and as i approach negative infinity we're approaching three so this is going to have two horizontal asymptotes which is y is equal to zero and y is equal to three 
Well, how do we do this? Well, we proceed like we always do because asking for horizontal, the limit as x approaches infinity, we're going to get 3 over. Well, remember, when it's infinity, we can ignore the top and the bottom. And so we're just going to get e to the uh, ignore the most insignificant. So we ignore the 1 and we get e to the x. Well, as you plug in infinity to e to the x, this is the bottom's going to get bigger than the top. We get 0. So that's how we're going to get one of them. Well, what happens as you plug in the limit as x approaches negative infinity well again when we plug in negative infinity and you just see exponential you don't ignore anything you keep it there and do one plus e to the negative infinity the top is going to stay the same which is three and let's focus in on the bottom which is one plus e to the negative infinity and this is going to become one plus well there's nothing multiplying the e in front so we put a placeholder of one divided by the negative exponent means divide, so e to the infinity. And what's going to happen here? Well, the bottom gets bigger than the top. This is going to become 0, and we get 1 plus 0, which becomes 3 over 1, which is 3. So we know the, that we're going to get a horizontal asymptote of y equals 3 as we approach negative infinity. Okay. Again, clear distinction here. We only care about exponential functions because when you plug in a number to the exponent it's gonna flip it for us so let's take a look at the graph to the left determine all the horizontal asymptotes of this function here okay well do you see any exponential functions there no so we can just proceed like always the limit as x approaches infinity what's the biggest influence on the top well we get 3x to the 6 divided by uh, 10x to the 8 and we can cancel a few things out, but we can right away tell the bottom is going to get bigger than the top, right? The exponents don't change. So that's why we don't have to worry about negative infinity, and this is going to approach zero. So y is equal to zero. And if you were to do negative infinity, well, it doesn't matter, right? Because we're still, the bottom is still going to get bigger than the top, and it's still going to approach zero. That's why you'll see with when we don't have any exponential functions it doesn't matter but then let's look over here well i notice i see exponential functions on the top and bottom here so that tells me that if i want to determine all the horizontal asymptotes i need to focus on the limit as we approach it from the right the limit as we approach infinity from the right and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of our function and if we do that, the limit as we approach infinity, well, this is just going to be focused on the numerator. It's the biggest influence is 3 to the x. The bottom is 3 to the x, and we get 1. Okay, well, what about negative infinity? Well, if we plug in negative infinity, we'll get 1 plus 3 to the negative infinity. Again, you can't ignore the 1 or anything in here, all right? Because when you plug in negative infinity, okay, you're going to notice that we can maybe rewrite this. Focusing on the numerator... We're going to get 1 plus, well, 1 over 3 to the infinity. And what's going to happen here? This whole thing is going to approach 0. So we get 1 plus 0, which is 1. Divided by, and we can do the same thing over here, 1 over 3 to the infinity. Bottom gets bigger than the top. This is going to be 0. So we get 1 minus 0, which is 1. And we get 1 over 1, which is 1. Boom. So there it is. So the limit as we approach it from the right Oh, this should, this should be a negative, by the way, so this becomes negative 1. Sorry for the catch, okay? So this should be the y equals negative 1 because I forgot there was a negative there. And then from the left, this is y is equal to 1. Boom, boom. So it's going to be C. Oops. So we're going to get C as the answer here. Whew. Okay, we'll do one last one and we'll call it a day. So I know this is tricky. I just wanted you exposed to it. I don't expect you to fully understand it 1000%, but I thought I could at least try to explain this through. So the graph of which of the following functions has exactly one horizontal asymptote and no vertical asymptotes, okay? Now notice in this problem here, okay, in order to get a vertical asymptote, we need to get zero on the bottom. That's number one. So we can't, there should be a function where we're not allowed to get zero on the bottom. And we only want one horizontal asymptote. Well, remember, whenever you see anything that's exponential, 2 to the x, e to the x, anything to the exponent on the top here, you know it's probably going to have two horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so I can right away look here and say, oh, C and D are going to have two horizontal asymptotes. They're exponential functions. We saw many problems up above of how that works. These are good. And now we're left with these two here. 
And now we ask ourselves, okay, both of these are power functions. So you know, as you plug in infinity, you will get a, you will get a horizontal asymptote, and you don't even have to worry what they are. But we know we're going to get just one, okay? Because the exponent it stays the same. It's only the one that has the exponent, the exponent, the x on the exponent. So if you look over here, we ask ourselves, okay, which one of these am I not going to be able to get? Which one of these? Am I allowed to get a vertical asymptote? Which one can I not? So we have two options. This and we have 1 over x to the 3 plus 8. Well, we know, okay, that if... Did I put an infinity symbol here? That should be an 8. We know that if I plug in a negative number, right, a negative, let's say a negative 2 into, the, into anything that's a odd exponent this is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 this is going to be positive 4 times negative 2 which is negative 8 anytime you have an odd exponent and you put a negative number inside we're still going to get a negative because the even powers cancels out to be positive but you're always going to be left with one negative uh negative constant there from the equation okay so i know here i can event i can plug something into here that'll be negative That'll raise the third power, and we'll get negative a plus a, which will give me zero. So I know this will have a vertical asymptote. And if I wanted to, I could solve it. Boom, set it equal to zero, and then we can begin to solve. Um, subtract eight to both sides, and then we get x to the third is equal to negative eight. Raise both sides to the one third. Boom, and we get x is equal to negative eight to the one third. And then if we do that, we'll be able to get zero on the bottom. Okay. Now, when it's an even, an even exponent, we won't be able to get a vertical asymptote. Why? Well, the reason why is is because what does a square do or an even exponent do to any number? It turns it positive. So if you plug in anything into here, it's going to be positive, right? Two squared is four. Uh, three squared is nine. It stays positive. But what happens if you plug in a negative number like negative two squared? Well, we get positive four. What if you plug in negative three? Well, we get positive nine. So you see the trick of it all here is to notice this is an even exponent. It will Whatever you plug in will always give you a positive number. So we're always going going to get underneath a positive number plus 8 which will never give you 0 so I can immediately conclude that my answer has to be 8 okay not B because I can, it's odd I can plug in something to get negative and then that negative plus 8 will eventually give me 0 when I solve it out I know it's not C or D because exponential functions will most likely give me two horizontal asymptotes okay so that's going to conclude this video series here i know it was a bit lengthy 17 minutes long but i hope you you kind of got something out of it if it's still confusing i understand don't worry we will get tons of practice it's just something for you to get your uh to get your head wrapped around all right thank you and you have a fantastic